as we start questioning our life, questioning our identity, who are we? My identity had been wrapped up in being a PhD student. At the time, I thought I was the failure. I'm a redhead now. Personal identity is part of my personal brand online. I actually really like Instagram. And this feels like the end of an era. <laughs> I think it's time for me to be just me. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to a new vlog. Welcome, if you're new here, hi, I'm Andrea. I'm a full-time writing instructor at a university and a part-time content creator and indie author. Welcome back, if you're one of my lovely returning friends. It is great to have you all here. It is 6.16 in the morning on Friday, so it is very early. The sun isn't even completely up yet. <laughs> but yeah, today is going to be... A fairly typical Friday, but it is getting flipped around a little bit, so I'm going to go do my walk as usual, and then I'm going to start working as quickly as possible and try to get a few hours of work in or a couple hours of work in before my day would typically start because I am going to be leaving in the middle of the day <laughs> to go for first a hair appointment because we've got to just freshen this up a little bit and then I am going to do Whole Foods on my own not with mom um, but I'll do Whole Foods after my hair appointment on my way home that just felt like the easiest thing to do yeah I don't know the exact focus of this vlog but I feel like we need to chat a little bit. I'm putting this vlog in the life in my 40s category and it's going to be just a day in my life as a woman in her 40s going about on a typical Friday but we will be talking about some of the responses to my recent video. That video is it's taking on a life of its own. It's almost a little bit scary. I'm not used to having videos take off to the extent that that one did and there's there's a lot more of you <laughs> watching these videos now. We've had quite a few new friends join our little community thanks to not just that video but just the last few videos in general and as a content creator that's awesome. I love that but also we've got a lot we've got a lot of friends now that we're that we're, we're getting to know. Um, so that's exciting and for the new people I'm saying we I'm not using the royal we I don't mean just me I mean we here in this community because this is this is a community so we're all friendly here say hi in the comments introduce yourself if you haven't yet already so yeah I'm just I'm I'm thrilled I'm excited it I felt we'll talk more about this later um, but the response has just been so incredible the comments on that video have been so incredible. It's just, I think it's the thing that's finally reminding me and making me feel like, okay, this is something you all want to hear about and want to watch and I need to get more, I need to stop trying to be like all the content creators in their 20s and 30s and to start being more clear and explicit that like, these vlogs are me living my life in my 40s and start talking more about some of the challenges and the joys the joys I feel like I got really nervous with that video as it started doing well and I'm like oh my gosh are people only watching this because I look a bit down in the thumbnail and the title makes it you know talks about how vulnerable I'm feeling and like it was it it was a down day that wasn't a completely normal day for me. I wasn't feeling my best that day and I really didn't know what I was going to be talking about in the vlog and I just felt really all over the place and uncertain and just thought well let me just talk about that. But we know, <laughs> we know from research that social media and users on social media, and I'm including myself in that, we respond to negativity faster than we respond to positivity. And I don't know, would that vlog have picked up as well as it did if 
I had been smiling in the thumbnail and talking about how great life in my 40s was. Maybe it would, we'll try that out because I do want to do more of those videos as well. But yeah, I was just that worry of like, did it only do so well because it looked like I was talking about how bad it was to be in my 40s. And it's really not. There are some scary things. There are some frustrating things. There are things about be entering your 40s. And for me, I'm now like m almost mid 40s. I'm pretty much, I'm on that border between, I feel like 43, you can still say your early 40s, but you're also getting really close to mid 40s. <laughs> And now that I'm 43 and a half, I feel like I am tipping into that mid 40s category. And so I've got a few years of experience now in my 40s. And there have been some struggles and some frustrations, but there's also been some really good things. And so we won't get to all of them in this vlog, but we'll get we'll talk about some. And I think that is going to be something that we talk about more going forward. But I can see... I can see it's getting a little bit lighter outside, so I think, yeah, the sun has come up. The sun has officially risen over the horizon, so I want to get out there so we can maybe see the sun come up over the mountains. There's a tiny sliver of the moon still up, and it looks like it's a little bit cloudy over the mountains or just beyond the mountains. So we will have to see how that impacts the sunrise. But it is a beautiful morning. And oh my gosh, these walks just give me life. <laughs> they have been absolutely life-changing. I just feel like, especially now that the weather is starting to get ever so slightly cooler to how I feel and to my mood overall. And like even if the rest of the day goes poorly, at least in this moment, I'm getting 30 to 40 minutes of just bliss. It's amazing. <laughs> I love being out here and hearing the birds and seeing the bunnies and Occasionally seeing some javelina, hoping I don't see any today, but I did see some the other week. <laughs> was a bit of a surprise for all of us who were out walking. We all kept our distance for sure, but this morning it is just absolutely beautiful. It's warmed back up here in the valley, which is less than ideal because it is now late September, so it really doesn't need to be 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. And I think that's what it got up to yesterday. But the saving grace is that the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer. And so it is cooling down more overnight. And so like it's 77 degrees right now. But the other good thing about the high heat is when it gets that hot, it tends to be really, really dry. And so even in the mornings, the humidity is fairly low. And so it's 77 degrees, but really low humidity. And since the sun isn't up yet, it feels pretty nice. I won't lie. So I am definitely enjoying that. freshened myself up really quick and now I am getting to work. I've got a few hours to work before I need to leave for my appointment. I don't always start working before 9 a.m. I usually try to respect <laughs> the 9 to 5 <laughs> and have before 9 to myself and after 5 to myself. But on days like this I'm so grateful for the flexible schedule of my job because it means I can just flip things and do more work 
earlier in the morning and then take a longer chunk of time off in the middle of the day. So I think it's gonna work out. I've been doing some work. I've been trying to do the like non-student facing work <laughs> before 9 a.m. But there, there's just so much student facing work I have to do today. So when I say student facing, I mean anything that could be have a timestamp attached to it that a student might see. Grading, replying to emails, posting announcements, things like that would all have a timestamp posted at X time. I really try to have that always be after 9 a.m. I don't mind like on a day like today if, if, if it happens where I reply to an email before 9 or I grade something or post an announcement before 9. Every now and then it's not a big deal but I don't like I don't want my students to get into a habit of like noticing that I'm doing work before 9 a.m. because I don't want them to ever expect a reply or something to be posted or graded before 9 a.m. because if I'm working before 9 a.m. it's for me. It's for my benefit. It's not for them or anyone else. So today is one of those few days where I'm I am having to do like all my work today is basically student facing. It's emails, it's posting announcements, it's doing a lot of grading. Although I think I think I'm actually caught up on grading. So um, I'm gonna do grading more later today. So it should just be a really chill, cozy day of well chilled and cozy other than like running out to run my errands. Although getting your hair done, I'm looking forward to that. Getting your hair done is always a good experience and my hair, it's still looking very beautiful, I think. I like my hair. I'm really liking being back more to my natural color, not really noticing my roots as much. So I am really liking this color but we have, we have a change in mind. So I'm hoping it will work. Um, I'm hoping fresh hair will just put me in a fresh mood. <laughs> I could go for a little bit of just, you know, a new identity. No, not really. I have enough identities as it is. That's something to talk about. So one of the things that came up and one of the things that um, the comments, so first of all, let me just address the comments on the feeling vulnerable video. You all are so nice. With all of my lovely existing YouTube friends, I knew that would be the case. I knew you all would be amazing and you were, you never disappoint. So that wasn't the surprise, but all the new eyes on this channel, it's always a little bit, I don't know what word I wanna use. I'm always a bit apprehensive when a video just starts doing a little bit better, or in this case, a lot bit better than uh, usual, because that's a lot of eyes suddenly on me all at once. I keep checking my held for review section of the comments and knock on wood, so far I haven't gotten a single mean, negative, nasty comment on that video. I am sure I have just jinxed myself. I'm sure those are coming. <laughs> But at this point, there has been so much love and support and validation, not just validating me and, and telling me that, you know, they're there, you know, they're there. It's okay how you're feeling. But more val what I mean by validation is like, so many of you are feeling the exact same way. And I just feel not only so heard and so seen, but I feel so understood. And that's a really nice feeling. So clearly I need to talk about these topics more. Clearly I need to not be afraid to talk about these topics more. I, I think I worry about talking about some of the more vulnerable topics because I don't have the answers. Like these are the things I don't have the answers for. And normally I try to not talk about something until I've come through the other side, or I've learned some lessons until I have some advice that I can pass on. And like, I'm still living through what feels like, some of you in the comments were calling it a midlife crisis or an identity crisis. And I've frequently used that language in the past. And one of my former therapists, because 
seen a lot of therapists over the years. You know, with my insurance changing from like being on my parents' insurance and then going on to private insurance when I turned 26 and then having that getting too expensive and having to go on grad student insurance and then graduating and finally getting a real grown-up job and having real proper adult insurance um, and benefits. It only took me until I was 38 something like that, 39, 38. Yeah, like it took me a while, but I finally got the, the, the big girl grown up insurance and, and benefits packages from my work. And so then that put me on a different insurance. So I've had to switch therapists a bunch. So one of my former therapists, one of the things that I took from my time with her was she challenged me when I first started talking about the identity crisis I felt like I was going through at the time as a PhD student and challenged me to think of it as an identity shift. And so that's what I would challenge all of us to try to keep in mind as we're coming into our 40s or mid 40s. And I think this applies for those of you who are in your 30s or even if you're in your early to mid 20s and feeling apprehensive about eventually turning 30, I feel like every big milestone birthday, we start questioning these things. We start questioning our life, questioning our identity, who are we, how is our career choices, our career path, our relationships, or lack thereof in terms of romantic relationships, how are all of these things impacting our identity? It's really easy to start thinking of it in terms of an identity crisis. And I feel like that's the headspace I was in when I was filming that video. I was not feeling well. I was in a really weird place in my cycle. And there's always about a week every month where the sky is falling and the world is ending and I'm horrible and my brain isn't working and I can't do anything right. And the negative self-talk is so strong during that week and I hate that week. I'm still trying to find a way of being compassionate to myself during that particular time of the month because it's, it's hell you know, it, it is legitimately Hell Week. Honestly, when I used to work in theater, Hell Week was always the week of tech rehearsals and dress rehearsals. I would rather go through 10 theater Hell Weeks in a row, back to back to back, than one normal hormonal Hell Week <laughs> on my current cycle. So yeah, it just, I was not in the best headspace and so there is a week each month or a week each cycle where I, it is an identity crisis and I'm questioning everything. And then the other three weeks I can think a little bit more logically and a little bit more rationally and think of it in terms of it's an identity shift. Who I am, what I'm, what goals I'm working towards, what dreams I'm dreaming for my life are shifting right now. I don't know what the new thing is going to be. I, I feel like this shifts for all of us throughout each decade. I feel like the last time I had this level of an identity shift, in my case, in terms of age, probably not since I turned 30. I feel like going from your 20s to your 30s is like really big. Now I'm starting to have this what feels like this big identity shift. And there are things changing in my, just things that I'm thinking about related to my career and stuff and my writing and my YouTube channel and how I'm approaching all of these things. And so that's changing how I'm thinking about myself and who I am and what I want. And I also feel like part of this is part two of the post PhD identity crisis slash shift. I did a video on that shortly after graduation. I think it might've been like a year after graduation. It was within that year, I'm pretty sure. So I've talked about that a little bit before, but again, it was something that I was still in the midst of. And I think my thoughts on where I'm at with that are so different. And that's probably a whole separate video, but maybe we can talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but 
I need to get back to work, post these announcements, and just try to get some of this stuff done before I've got to leave for my hair appointment in a little bit. I need water. I had breakfast and a glass of juice here at my desk, but I forgot to get my water. So I'm gonna go get my water and then sit back down. I'm enjoying, the blinds are closed, but there's still some like morning sunlight. You can, you can see, there's still some morning sunlight coming in through my office window. The like mid morning light is so different from the early morning sunrise light. I just, I'm, I'm loving it. So yeah, anyway, water and then work and then more chat. I have made a lot of progress. Teaching work is going well. But anyway, we were talking about identity crises. Crises? 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 I, yeah, I'm an English major. I should know this. Um, talking about identity shifts and how we need to think of it as a shift and not a crisis. And I mentioned that part of the problem I was having when it really first started hitting this like feeling like I was having an identity crisis was when I graduated from my PhD because so much of my identity had been wrapped up in being a PhD student. PhD student, PhD candidate, but being in my PhD and, and being a grad student in general. And I had been a grad student off and on for several years, seven years in a row in terms of my second master's and then my PhD. I took a three year gap. I finished my first master's in December of 2007 and I went back to grad school in August of 2010. So I took about three years. I think I took three academic years. Well, two and a half since I graduated in, in December, something like that. Two and a half, three years off between first master's and second master's, and then I did my second master's and my PhD all straight through. So that was seven years in a row. And those, those few years in between my first master's and my second master's, I really struggled. I was in my late 20s, approaching 30, feeling like I didn't know what I was doing with my life, it was post 2008 recession. I literally graduated like just a month or so before the economy just imploded. I thought I was gonna get this master's degree and then move back up to the Phoenix Valley and get a job at one of the community colleges. And I would teach theater and film and probably do community theater on the side, kind of like I ended up doing, but I was doing it part time because when I did finally start getting teaching jobs, they were all part-time adjunct faculty. So there was a few years going into my second master's before I got accepted and then the two years I did my master's where I was not teaching for my university program, but I was teaching at the community colleges and I was teaching theater and I was designing costumes. I taught at one community college for quite a few years, for a few years. But for one year in particular, I was not only an adjunct faculty member, but I was also, we called me the resident costume designer. It was a very small stipend. I was basically a paid volunteer. I was making, like, I remember when I did the Scarlet Pimpernel, I put in so many hours on that show. I was probably making the equivalent of like $3 an hour. Like when you took the stipend, they paid me and divided it by the number of hours I actually put in. It was like two or $3 an hour. It sounded fancy calling myself the resident costume designer, but it wasn't like that job would be at a 
another theater. At that time, I was, you know, when I was approaching 30, I was struggling because I knew I wasn't going to be a costume designer forever, and I didn't want to pursue that as my career, but teaching wasn't working out with the degree that I had and with the way that the community college system had changed post-recession, and so I thought all the full-time teaching jobs are requiring a terminal degree, so an MFA or a PhD. So I guess I'll go back and do a PhD. And I took a step backwards to get a master's in the field I wanted to study my PhD work in and then move forward with the PhD. So that's how I have two master's degrees. You do not need, most people do not need two master's degrees. When I tur finally turned 30, I had made the decision, I think I'd already applied or had been accepted. I think I'd applied and was waiting for acceptances and then shortly after turning 30, I found out I got into that master's program and was going back to school. And so it felt like I had a renewed sense of purpose. And so my 30s were really dominated by grad school. And that gave me, that gave me back an identity. I, I was a grad student again. I was a master's student and then a PhD student. When I, doing that master's, I knew I was going to do a PhD student, so a PhD. So the whole grad student, PhD path mentality, that became my identity. It also coincided with social media really kind of taking off in 2010, 2011. Grad school also got really wrapped up in social media, especially towards the end of my PhD, like the second half. I was doing Instagram, I was blogging, I had started YouTube in 2016 when I, around the time that I shifted from being a PhD student to being a candidate. I think I had, by the time I started, I think I had passed my portfolio review, but I, I hadn't done comps, because I remember vlogging comps. So I hadn't done comps yet, I wasn't yet ABD, but I was nearing ABD when I started YouTube. And so all of these things became a huge part of my online identity, which I kind of, and this probably wasn't a good thing, made my online identity my actual identity. And to a certain extent, like I, I, want, I want my online identity to be my actual identity. I don't wanna be a completely different person online than I am in real life. Like if any of you ever met me in real life, I would want you to be like, oh my gosh, she's just like she seems in the videos. Someone on that, I think it was on the Feeling Vulnerable video said that watching all of my vlogs, not just that one, but all of my vlogs feels like FaceTiming a friend. That is exactly how I want these videos to feel. Whether I'm keeping you company when you're getting ready in the morning or you're getting ready for bed at night or on your lunch break or while you're at your desk working on something, like I want it to feel like FaceTiming with a friend. And that's why I love when you write comments because it, it's a way of like interacting back Otherwise, it's literally just me sitting alone in my apartment talking to a camera. I don't want my online identity to be completely different from my actual identity, but I think that's what kind of caused that initial identity crisis, that feeling of it being a crisis, because I had made so much of my online identity being a grad student, and then all of a sudden I wasn't a grad student anymore, and I didn't, I didn't know I didn't know who I was, and so I didn't know who to be online. I didn't know, and I was not brave enough to really talk about that as I was going through it. I felt like I was the only one who was dealing with that. I now know that it is fairly common because most people, when they finish their PhDs, they don't get the big, bright, shiny assistant professorship job that they, you know, tenure track job that they dreamed of. A lot of my classmates and, and people I know who attended PhDs at other universities have ended up in a very different career path than they initially thought they would when they started grad school. So, but at the time I didn't know that. At the time I thought I was the failure. I thought I was the one who just had made bad decisions and had messed up my entire life, basically, is how I felt at the time. And there's still a lot of complicated feelings about academia and research and my scholarship. These are all thoughts for another video. This is way too big to get into in this one, but that's all part of this identity 
crisis identity shift that I've been dealing with since mid-2018. And for people who've been following my channel since then, you might remember there was a brief time when I was going to start a Freelancers Diaries series on here because I was getting into freelance copywriting. That didn't last. Tried it. Did okay. Didn't really like it. Didn't want copywriter to be my new identity. Then we got into indie write, indie authorship and indie publishing and creative writing. And this does feel a lot more accurate to like what my identity is going forward and I I am a writer I I am an indie author and maybe one day I'll be a hybrid author but being an author that that is a huge part of who I am and being a content creator being a vlogger being a youtuber and even if YouTube goes away and we shift to something else I think I will always be a content creator regardless of the platform I'm using regardless of the type of content I'm creating whether it's video or blogging or photos or a combination of those I will always be a content creator so when I introduce myself at the start of a vlog hi I'm Andrea I'm a full-time university writing instructor and a part-time content creator and indie author I mean that I'm starting to realize like that really is who I am now and I think that's the identity that is probably going to stick the most, particularly in the author and content creator. But now I'm thinking about, okay, what does that mean to me to be an indie author and a content creator? And how can I make that as clear as possible? And how can I be more strategic about that in terms of how I present myself online? So it's things like, my thumbnails on these videos, how I title the videos, making that really specific and really clear, particularly for new viewers who the video is being recommended to and they're not subscribed. I'm hoping that, like, if any of you followed me from the Feeling Vulnerable video and talking about life in my 40s, if you haven't watched the two videos ago, but also probably the last video, which were more indie author focused, there's stuff that comes up in the indie author vlogs that is also about life in my 40s. So I'd go and give those videos a try because even if you're not a writer, I think you would still be interested in them because I'm still talking about a lot of these things. But trying to find a way of structuring how I'm presenting myself in a way that if someone isn't familiar with my content, it's a bit more clear of what that content is. And also just getting really specific and focused with the various places I show up online, including Instagram. But I need to get going or I'm gonna be late for my appointment. So I'm gonna make a note and we will pick up in, oh, I've got a low battery light too. So we will change out the battery, all of that good stuff. I'm gonna go have a hair transformation, go to Whole Foods. I'll take you along with me for all of that. And then we will talk about some changes that are coming to my Instagram account slash accounts. And that's your hint. So keep watching. of new identities. I'm a redhead now. <laughs> okay, let's go to Whole Foods.
I am done with work for the day. Now I'm ready to just stop, but I really, really, really want to do some cover design work. But I think the cover design work I want to do, there's two issues I'm having. On the one hand, I like having everything on the big screen. On the other hand, it's easier to connect my computer to my iPad to use as a drawing pad if I'm not connected to the big screen. So I might do some of the drawing work today and then do some more work on the big screen tomorrow. That's my plan. But yeah, um, meetings went well, Whole Foods went well, hair appointment went well. I'm a redhead now. I really like it. Could this be my redhead era? I don't know. I I was a brunette for so many years and I, lo I love, love, love the dark espresso brown on my hair. I really do. I just love how it makes my eyes pop. But dark hair is a lot of maintenance when you have light hair naturally. It's one thing when you have dark hair naturally and you, you bleach it and dye it blonde. I feel like we've normalized darker roots, but having lighter roots with darker hair, that's just not a natural thing. And it, yeah, it just looks like you've dyed your hair dark and now your roots are growing in. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of maintenance to have darker hair when you are naturally blonde. So I'm hoping the red might be, because the roots really are only a tiny bit darker and redder than my natural color is. So we're hoping, this is a demi-permanent, so it's not a permanent color. So this will fade, and red tends to fade pretty quickly. So the hope is that as it fades and as my roots grow out, the roots will just kind of blend and it won't be super obvious. My next appointment is in about five weeks. So if it is obvious, we can just tweak the root color to make it blend and just let this continue fading and we'll see. We're gonna play it by ear, but for now, I'm loving the red hair for autumn and yeah. This is making me very happy. So, and it feels like perfect for like a video where I'm talking about identity shifts and stuff. Yeah, for now, I'm a redhead and that's gonna be part of my identity. <laughs> but I also wanted to talk about Instagram and like shifting identities and my personal brand and like how my personal identity is part of my personal brand online and all of that sort of thing. I haven't made the switch yet, but by the time this video goes up, because this video is gonna go up on a Wednesday, and I'm filming this on Friday, September 27th, and it's gonna go up on Wednesday, October 2nd, and I think I will have made the switch by then. So I have had two Instagram accounts since I started publishing. I've had my kind of personal lifestyle Instagram account. That's how I've been thinking about it in my head. It's public, but it's my more personal life, lifestyle focused account where I put travel pictures, hiking pictures, um, pictures of our family dogs, stuff like that. And when I started self-publishing, I thought, well, I need to have, you know, a more professional author account. Um, especially because I was not just kind of positioning myself as an author, but also as first a copywriter. Um, that's what it started. It started as my like business account for me as a copywriter. Then I felt like, well, that just transitions well into um, indie publishing and being a writer, but also editing and coaching, although I've never really talked about those things on there. I've never really settled on like what, what the identity of that account was other than just me as an author and a lot of the advice I was seeing was like having an author having social media accounts associated with you as an author like part of your author platform is a good idea and so I just felt like I needed to have that separate even though so much of the Instagram advice is to not split and segment your your personality, so to speak, but to just have one account that just is all aspects of you. But I still had the separate account and I have struggled over the years to maintain 
a consistent practice of uploading on that account to the point where it sometimes makes it difficult for me to upload and post things on my regular account. And there are some times where literally, literally the only thing I post on Instagram on either account in a week are stories with the links to these vlogs. And the thing is, I actually really like Instagram. I know a lot of people don't. I know you'll find articles or people complaining about Instagram is dead and it's all pay to play and it's all the algorithm. But like, I don't really care about those things. I just, I love photos. I love photography. I love videography. I love talking about the photos and giving a backstory to them. I, I love using Instagram as my photo diary. I just am better at posting pictures and videos than I am actually writing in a diary. I do really like Instagram, but I get so overwhelmed by having these two accounts I'm trying to manage. So long story short, I'm getting and I'm getting rid of the second account but I'm moving I'm merging my identities basically there there's no longer going to be a personal lifestyle account and an author and writing account it's all going to be one I'm not going to delete what is currently the author account and I will be changing the name so and this feels like the end of an era <laughs> Je suis juste moi is gonna finally go away <laughs> um, on both Instagram and on here as well. I don't know if that will have changed by the time this video goes up, but for those who have found me more recently and like within the last year or so, Je suis juste moi used to be my channel name and it's also my original Instagram name. Um, back when you didn't put your real name on your social media accounts and personal brands weren't really a thing. So Je suis juste moi, it, it roughly in French means I am just me um, and I think it's time for me to be just me and to be Andrew J. Severson on all of my platforms um, and not hide behind a username. So a while back, I did change on YouTube to Andrew J. Severson. I think it's Andrew J. Severson author, and then in parentheses, AKA Just Be Just Moi. So I will remove that AKA at some point. Um, and Instagram, I'm going to switch over from being Just Be Just Moi on my personal account and Andrew J. Severson on my author account, I'm going to change the author account to like Andrea Severson backup or Andrew J. Severson backup or Andrew J. Severson something. Andrew J. Severson, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but it's basically going to be a backup account and then Just Be Just Moi will change to at Andrew J. Severson. I have gone back and forth on this forever. Forever and ever and ever. Like I've, I, I think part of me felt from the beginning that it was wrong to create a second account, um, but I was worried about alienating any of my current followers who weren't interested in me when I was gonna do copywriting and then when I started publishing, I thought, well, maybe people don't wanna know about my books. But at this point, I'd rather lose followers on my main account than keep trying to run two separate accounts. Um, and it's time for me to kind of be proud of the fact that I'm an author of nearly eight novels now published and to show that off and to show more of my life, my whole life as a writer and not try to split off and segment my life and what can be talked about in which place. I don't do that here in YouTube. On YouTube, my life is my life. These vlogs are my life and you see all of it in these vlogs. You see the writing, you see the teaching, you see the, the meltdowns. You know, that's, that's a good thing. Um, and I want Instagram to kind of be more of a true model of of YouTube and what's happening over here. I want them to be more closely linked. And so having the two Instagram accounts, it's just not working for me. I want to get back into a regular practice and habit of uploading and posting things on Instagram and using Instagram more often and not having to decide which does this go better on, which account does this content fit better on. I just want one account. So by the time you're watching this, 
And now this is setting a t time deadline because otherwise this whole segment of the vlog is going to have to get scrapped and I don't want to do that. So by the time you're watching this, that change will have happened. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, but it does still feel like the end of an era to finally see Je suis juste moi fade into history. I don't know. It, 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 it it's bittersweet. It's not sad. And bittersweet doesn't even sound right. It's time. And I think that's also, Je suis juste moi was something that I started as a grad student. And I think it's one more way I can start moving past that old identity of Andrea as a grad student and more firmly embrace who I feel like I am now, which is Andrea, published author, indie author, um, and content creator. So, yeah, that's, that's just a little update there. Um, was not expecting this vlog to go in this direction with all this talk about identity, but it's actually been really nice, and I feel like I've been in a really good mood throughout this discussion. So see, I don't melt down all the time. I can talk about these big topics without crying. That's really nice. <laughs> but yeah, I need to do some work on my cover, so I'm going to disconnect from here and migrate over to the couch and get my iP- oh, my iPad needs to be charged. That's okay, I can do that. So I do have to sit on the couch for that. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna work, it's quarter to five. I'm probably gonna work until about 5.15 and then I will start relaxing for the rest of the day and kind of start kicking off the weekend because I am tired and ready for the weekend. <laughs> on the couch. I have done my skincare, so face is scrubbed clean of makeup. I am ready for the weekend. I am ready for a nice, hopefully long night's sleep. But cover progress is going quite well. Um, my Apple Pencil died, so I had to stop using that and switch back to just using the trackpad on my MacBook, but progress has been made and I'm like it's made a huge difference. So I'm I'm really, really liking how it's turning out. Um, I think it's just gonna make such a huge difference to the overall final cover. Um, even though it's not gonna be like you're not gonna be able to see it as as clearly. Like I zoom in and I can see the detail, but on the final cover, it's gonna be a lot smaller, but it's still making a huge difference. But fingers crossed, I do think the cover is gonna be finished, um, the, the Kindle cover, the front cover illustration, I think will be finished by Sunday. And then that would give me this next week to do the paperback cover and get all the last bits kind of done and ready for everything to be uploaded next weekend. Oh, we're getting close. So yeah, I just, I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready for this book to be out. I'm ready to move on to the next project. I'm ready to not talk about working on this project anymore. Yeah. It's been a good day. Um, I've had so much fun chatting with you. The one not so good thing today, I forgot to mention it earlier, because um, by the time I got home from my hair appointment and Whole Foods, I was just focused on getting logged on for my meetings. 
but when I was at the salon waiting for Chelsea, my hairstylist, to get there, I was on Instagram and saw the absolutely heartbreaking news that Maggie Smith has passed away today. And I was not prepared for how emotional I got. I was not prepared to literally burst into tears sitting in my car when I saw the news. I was not okay. Everyone loves Maggie Smith from Downton Abbey and Harry Potter and so many other, you know, more recent movies. But I think the first thing I saw of Maggie Smith was The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. And because I had read the play during undergrad, because I was a theater major, and I'd read the play for some class or another, but the movie, and I rewatched the movie, um, it's been a while now, but I rewatched it like maybe 10 years ago, which would have been like 10 years after originally watching the movie and seeing, reading the play. I need to watch it again. She is, she is so good in that movie. She is so good. She plays, a teacher at an all-girls school. If you haven't seen The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, look it up. And then of course I love her as Professor McGonagall. I, Professor McGonagall is probably my favorite character in the Harry Potter movies. You, you just want these people to live forever and you know that's not how it works. But oh, I just, it really hurt my heart. That definitely got me earlier today. I just, I wasn't prepared. If you're a Maggie Smith fan, let me know what your favorite. I do think, I do think Downton Abbey, I think her character in Downton, Downton Abbey is probably my favorite of all of her characters. I don't know, if any of you are Maggie Smith fans, let me know in the comments. Let me know your favorite roles or the first thing of hers, the first film or TV episode, or if you've seen her live on stage. Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. Um, but yeah, what was the first thing that you ever watched Maggie Smith in? If you've watched any of her work, I'd love to know. And then also, let's chat about identity, identity crisis, identity shift, shifting our thinking from thinking of it as an identity crisis to an identity shift. I think it's normal that we change. We don't stay the same. And I think that's one of the things I'm taking from the conversation in the comments on the Feeling Vulnerable video is how many of you also feel like life hasn't gone as planned or dreams that you had when you, you were younger haven't come true. I, I think, and a few people mentioned that they've kind of learned that maybe life doesn't all get figured out and maybe life is just always meant to be messy and chaotic and that's just part of the joy of being alive and part of the privilege of aging is that we experience all the ups as well as all the downs and yeah I just I think it'd be fun to continue talking about identities and how our identities change as we get older and as we go through different stages of our life so if anything I've said in today's video has triggered something that you're like oh I've got a thought on that let me know in the comments and we can all read and and learn from each other. I love seeing you liking each other's comments and replying to each other's comments. So let's keep doing that. And yeah, if you enjoyed this vlog, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not subscribed, all of that great stuff. I would really appreciate it. Say hi in the comments. Let me know how you're doing as well as responding to um, anything I've said today in the vlog. Um, and then you can also leave me um, either a hair flip or a, let's go for a fire emo emoji for my fiery red hair. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the new hair color. I really am. So yeah, you can leave me a hair flip or a fire emoji for my new hair color. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go get back to being cozy on the couch and I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye!